What is going on? Welcome back to Financial Journey. So today I want to give you a very in-depth overview of everything that you need to know leading into next week, data points, some events that definitely could cause a lot of fluctuations and so far I'm going to go through it all. But before again, to any of that, making sure you guys hit that thumbs up and subscribe. I greatly appreciate that. If you are new to the channel, I do daily videos on trending stocks, crypto, I do it all. So make sure you do subscribe. But with that though, let's get right to it. So I want to start off by going over some events coming next week that could cause a little bit more volatility in SoFi and also the broader market, one of which is coming on Wednesday, and that is good old CPI data. So technically, right now it does appear, though, it's starting to kind of be a little bit more curbed or in a trough, if you want to call it that. So hopefully this might be the last bad CPI data and that we should be able to continue to trend down. But there was a lot of interesting things that did happen this week, one of which was the inverted yields, which in reality really scared the feds. They did say that on their next meeting, which is on the 27th, that most likely they're going to do a 50 point increase um, most likely though because of that inverted yield they're going to most likely cease any future uh, rate hike so that might be something optimistic for a lot of growth stocks such as SoFi uh, but at the end of the day this is something that is going to cause a little bit more volatility leading up to this date so this is on Wednesday and then we all know technically on Tuesday as far as the shareholder meeting there's a lot of touchy things that's going to be discussed on there one of which is reverse split make sure you guys do subscribe because I'm going to be live streaming the shareholder meeting and then that way I can also give you my interpretation on anything that was said um, leading up to that as well. So overall though, those are two things that could cause a little bit more volatility in SoFi and the broader market. So let me know your thoughts on SoFi in the comments below. Like I said, when it comes down to the reverse split, which I think in reality is one of the more uh, touchy subjects, um, let me know your thoughts on that. If you are for, against it, whatever it is, I think that's one of the biggest divides that I've ever really seen in a growth stock um, because regardless of all that though SoFi has a lot of potential and I find that this whole reverse split kind of debacle is very much unnecessary my own two cents though I'm not a financial advisor either so do your own due diligence this is only for entertainment purposes and at the end I hope you are entertained by this but leading up to next week though I do see a continued kind of momentum swing and obviously because of Friday we went down because of upstart uh, it does suck um, but it is what it is can't really change that SoFi is a completely different company there is going to be a lot of good things that is said from their earnings and that won't necessarily be for the next couple of weeks but still at the end of the day there's a lot of other things that's happening behind the scenes institutions being one of them and on Friday they backed up the bus they really bought a lot of shares and looking here you can see a ton of institutional purchasing um, some notable ones 1.24 million 1.22 million just in individual transactions but still a lot of big money was getting in on Friday and this was more of a continuation as well what happened on Thursday Thursday was a epic day like seriously every single institution must have been really backing up the bus and like I said it's because the feds did say that they do see a continuation over the next six months in the US economy economy showing nice strong growth and that gives it a little bit more calming in the market regardless of if they increase uh, the interest rates on the 27th or whatever happens based on the CPI data the feds are under the impression and giving kind of a us a calming so that's something very optimistic if you ask me so in addition to that though one interesting thing that did happen on Friday shorts were really closing um, significantly so right now the short interest is 18.59 still 135 million shares being currently shorted cost of borrow has been kind of uh, going up a little bit so the average is 3.57 as usual you see manipulation cost of borrow minimum is actually negative showing a brokers out there physically paying people to short SoFi, so that is negative 0.11%. So overall, it is what it is, but shorts did close out 2.97 million shares on Friday. So very optimistic. And I just wanna quickly pop over to Interactive Brokers, because I like to use them because they have a lot of good compiled information, articles, everything that you need to know. I do have a link to them in the description below and also the comments, I'll put it there. Just click on link, play around, has a lot of good information. One of which is technical analysis, so I'm gonna break that down as well. But I just wanna start off by going over this. So so several different things, one of which is here. So as far as technical actual catalyst for SoFi among with other stocks to know for this upcoming week, they talk on SoFi and they refer to as far as the high short interest. So again, depending on what comes from that shareholder meeting and also CPI data, we potentially could see a nice little squeeze of the shorts. Like I said, 135 million shorts are currently out. So SoFi is definitely up there. And so over and above that one though, I just wanna go through this article, three reasons to buy 
buy SoFi, one reason to sell. And this is exactly why I like Interactive Brokers. Like I said, it has all the good uh, contents and articles all in one spot. And so looking here, three reasons to buy SoFi, one reason to sell. So they talk on vaguely how having high FICO scores within for the customers is a very big deal because ultimately that kind of reduces the overall risk for SoFi. So that's one good attribute that they really value. Second one is more of a touchy subject, but they do talk on the student loans that regardless it will be repaid. Obviously there's going to be some most likely forgiveness um, on those uh, loans, which again, it is what it is, but still a majority of which is still very beneficial. You can see 2019, 6.7 billion in student debt. 2021, there was 4.3 billion. So clearly a lot of potential money. And I think based on estimates, they were saying roughly about 35 million every quarter. Uh, SoFi is missing out on potential revenue up until this does get uh, resolved. So it's one of those things that will eventually come to us. And that is a good reason why you need to buy based on this. Because keep in mind, when you are investing, you're not necessarily just investing for the next week. You're investing for the long term. And SoFi has a long term kind of a mentality. That's what you need to do. And finally, when it comes down to it, it does talk on its acquisitions and basically how it makes it a little bit more uh, of a tech component, a uh, tech advantage over the kind of basic banks such as Bank of America and so forth. And it does talk on one reason to sell. So ultimately it's saying that hypothetically with raising rates uh, and its debt levels, it's not necessarily going to be as profitable as what a lot of people were under the assumption, which insinuating that the price potentially could go down. That is in the sum basically that. So at the end of the day, I don't really agree with the reason to sell, but it is very important to kind of look at the viewpoints of why it's reasons to buy. So again, I just wanted to pop that over and, and just explain that to you because I found this uh, very interesting. And finally, like I said, when it comes down to it, I'm going to do some uh, technical analysis of my own and give you kind of a projection of where things might be going for SoFi. But I just want to continue on here because when I do technical analysis, I actually do more so look at uh, some moving averages, indicators, things along those lines. But one thing I really do value about interactive brokers is it does kind of humor the Elliott wave. And that is very time consuming to draw out and things like that. So as long as we can stay above the pivot point of $4.64, which is a very strong likelihood that we are going to, it does project SoFi going to $7.12 to $7.55, which is very positive if you ask me, especially such a low pivot point. The likelihood of us going up is very strong, especially if the institutions keep on adding as much as they are. And make sure you do click on Interactive Brokers and just play around. It has a lot of good information. And it is now that time of season again when 13Fs come out, is transitioning from ETFs now to uh, institutions. So a lot more institutions are disclosed their positions in SoFi and a lot of which is fairly optimistic. Uh, again, these aren't that necessarily big players that we want to watch for. That's going to come most likely first week of August, but still a lot of these institutions are for the most part increasing their position, which again is a very big deal. So you can even see CTC did add 99%, some kind of reduced at 15%, some increased 175%. It's all over the place, but I think the common theme is a lot of big money finds significant value in SoFi. Even looking at their average share prices, those that did physically get in or add, they have fairly high averages. Insinuating at those prices, they saw significant value, even more so Anderson Hoglin, whatever that is, $6.85, which in reality, they got 287,000 shares of SoFi. So clearly at roughly about $7, they found significant value. So goes to show, puts it in perspective of exactly where we are. So with that, I'm just going to cap it off with technical analysis. So I do have the 50, 100, 200 day moving averages, boiler bands, RSI, stochastic, and momentum. Momentum, you can see number of buyers have been going up quite a lot recently, very optimistic. Stochastic, you can see a nice deviation, so black line above the red showing a nice bullish trend. RSI is currently at 50, so fairly neutral, so it's not oversold, not overbought, anything like that. It's kind of neutral, which is very optimistic. And looking on the actual chart, we did try to have a nice little breakout last couple days, but unfortunately not enough necessarily to get over that 50-day uh, moving average. And conveniently, exactly where that 50-day moving average is and also the higher percentile of the boiling band they are exactly where they are so there's very strong resistance at that stage but if there is a nice continuation and like i said depending on the shareholder meeting cpi data we potentially could get over that and then get to pretty much the seven dollar mark very much easily and then from there it is just a very fast domino effect because like i said previously one big catalyst of sofi is a capable chance of having a short squeeze 
let me know your thoughts on that in the comments below but i just want to give you a couple other projections more so looking here on the fibonacci it gives you a good kind of macro view of this so six dollars and four cents is a very strong pivot point for the fibonacci we are technically above that. So I know we did have a little bit more of a mixed Friday, but still very much over the pivot point. So potentially still a nice uh, continuation of a bullish trend is very much possible. And just wanted to give you more so a kind of a micro view now. So first, second and third resistance points, we didn't necessarily get over them, unfortunately, like I said, because of upstart largely. Um, but keep that in mind, $6.40, $6.60 and $6.84 is kind of the points that you really need to watch for coming next week. On the contrary, though first second and third support is roughly about six dollars 572 and 552 so this is where you do see a little bit more of a gap potentially here but again it is all over the place we did potentially even break past that, that first support point but still i'm very optimistic about sofi and i think there's going to be a lot of good things coming for it and potentially as well like i said shorts closing out the positions institutions are buying sofi significantly and also the technicals look very good for sofi so i think there's absolutely no no reason or justification to assume that we are going to go down this coming week if anything it should potentially test almost seven dollars my own two cents like i said this is only for entertainment purposes but with that said i appreciate you guys watching don't forget to hit that thumbs up subscribe do all that fun stuff and i greatly appreciate that you guys all have an amazing weekend and let's all make a lot of money on sofi